Hello and welcome to Five Year Club, video number 286. Make sure my audio is working. It is. Good. Uh, tonight I wanted to talk about the phrase penny wise pound foolish. And that is generally speaking where you try to save a small amount of money, the penny, and you lose out on a pound because there are some things that are worth spending money on or in some cases you have to spend money to make money. And the two um, examples that have come up for me recently uh, are, number one, uh, certain types of education. So for example, um, you may need to advance in your job, right? So then you think, okay, uh, I need to go out and buy a book. So you buy a book and you read the book and the book's okay but the book's complicated and you have a hard time getting yourself through it. And so it's like, ugh. All right. Now, there are different levels of, you know, preparation for this stuff, right? Like you go to a master's degree for $50,000. But there's also like this kind of new level now that's like the automated tutorial online. And that might include some videos. Um, but generally speaking, it's a little bit more interactive than a book so that it pulls you through the education process. Those, well, they can cost $30, but they're usually like more. Um, and this one that I was looking at, I think it was on sale in April for like 99 bucks. But um, I had to admit to myself, like, I need to just, you know, pay for this. You know, plunk down the money. So I have this automated program that pulls me through it. And um, and I definitely procrastinated for like two or three days uh, to purchase that class because I'm so used to like saving money now that of course, you know, education online, the first thing you do is you say like, oh, I can find all that stuff for free. It's true, you can find all that stuff for free, but it's gonna take you time to dig through everything. It's going to take you time to decide all the different subjects that are going to go into um, that that body of knowledge that you need to study. And the time that you're taking kind of searching for things and putting th things together is time that you're not spending actually studying. And since the difference in, you know, job salary outcomes uh, for knowing this material well is at least 10 times, literally, the cost of, you know, the education program, it's a no-brainer, just pay for the class. Now, obviously, there are diminishing returns, right? Like, if you pay for more classes than you can take, then it doesn't make any sense. Um, and obviously, and you know, if you're paying for a class that's like a cooking class and the job that you're applying for is um, being a school teacher, well, maybe cooking will be related to your school teaching job adjacently at some point, but you're not likely to get more money for it. So you have to identify these situations where the education is directly tied to, you know, interview performance or, um, you know, I know in the case of some government jobs and school system jobs, master's degrees have like very defined payback terms. And so... Um, especially for teachers, doing them pays off in many situations. The second thing I wanted to talk about uh, was applications, um, which is like, for example, when you apply for college, if you only apply for one college, well, then that's only one shot at financial aid. That's only one, um, that's only one deal. Uh, if you apply for 10 colleges, that's 10 different shots at financial aid, and one of those schools may give you a much better deal than the others. Obviously, diminishing returns. If you apply to 100 schools, you're not likely to get that much more variation than what you see beyond, I don't know, 10 or 20. So it's worth it to, you know, pay enough to get up to, um, I guess, some kind of minimum amount of diversification in that process, and then not much beyond. But certainly don't be deterred, you know, if you're applying to college by like $100 application fees or something like that, even $200 application fees, because the financial aid that you could get could pay back all of that. 
and um, and it's important to realize that reality. It's important to realize that reality. It's very uh, eloquent. It's important to spend the money when you need to spend the money. And I think that education is one of those areas where if you say, no, nah, I'm not going to do it, you really need to always say, let me rethink that, rethink it. Maybe you'll still think it's not worth it, but maybe you'll rethink it and you'll and you'll know like, yeah, I really should pay for that. I don't want to, but I really should. Um, yeah, swallow your pride. Whatever works. You know, I talk on this channel a lot about like, um, you know, if you have a credit card that you're not supposed to use, uh, cut it up or freeze it in a block of ice or, you know, whatever. Um, well, if you have a credit card you're supposed to use, that's any credit card you have as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, easy calculation there. But point is, don't don't think that like succeeding with money is about uh, self-control in the sense that like mental self-control, discipline. It's not. It's about putting barriers in place to make you succeed um, and putting not, not just barriers in the sense of like preventing you from doing things, but also like you got to like hook something like into your nose, to, like pull you forward in good directions. Um, part of the way that I do that is, um, is I try to project out like savings amounts over the years and I force them to increase. And then when I look and I see like, where am I supposed to be? I'm like, ah, oh, I need to increase. Um, because that's what the plan says. The plan's arbitrary, but that's what the plan says. So it's, you know, it's something that's, that's exists and is pulling me in that direction. Um, getting accountability buddies for things. Those people will, you know, tend to pull you in a good direction. Um, anything that you can do to take the decision out of your hands, you know, like go ahead and sign up for, I don't know, like some kind of like fun run or some kind of run. And then it's like, well, I've already signed up for it. Now I guess I better train. It's a lot easier to train for a marathon when you know you've got to run one in six months, I think. Not that I've trained for and ran a marathon, but in my mind, I imagine that's true. All right, well, I think that this is where uh, Five Year Club video number 286 will end. Um, Pennywise, Pound Foolish. Make sure that you spend money on things that can make a big difference in your outcome, even if you're not happy that you have to do them or happy that you have to spend money on them. It's important. Um, to take those uncomfortable steps to get yourself ahead. All right. Have a fabulous evening.